Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to focus on this verse from our Gospel reading. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as, ser as serpents and innocent as doves. That's one thing that Jesus said among so many things, but uh, this is one of the ones that's kind of always stuck with me, or I've kind of taken that with me as something that I need to hold on to and remember a lot. It's important to note that there was no promise that being a follower of Jesus Christ would make your path through life easy or successful. In fact, Jesus gave this kind of fair warning that being a Christian may bring serious trouble. A sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, I'm not a wildlife expert, but I know that that's not a good place to be. No one wants to walk around with a sign that says, lunch, hanging around their neck. But that does not mean that Jesus is saying you should just let the wolves overrun you either. Jesus has advice for Christians who are entering a hostile world. Jesus says we are to be as wise as serpents. There is a connection here with Genesis chapter 3 where we are told that the serpent was more crafty than all the beasts of the field. Jesus is connecting to that. Be wise, be crafty, be shrewd. Don't be naive about the ways of this world. And yet, and this is a very important and yet, he says in the very same breath, be as innocent as doves. In other words, fight fire with fire is not a saying that Jesus would have promoted. We are sheep in the midst of wolves does not mean that we are to become wolves ourselves in order to survive or to join in their folly. We cannot just become like the world around us in order to make the problem of a hostile world go away. We are to know about the world. We are to go into each situation with our eyes wide open. We should be wise and observant and trying to figure out all of the angles. But never are we to become the tricksters ourselves. Innocent, but not naive. An incredibly hard balance to strike. In fact, I think that in human terms, it's actually impossible to strike that balance correctly. Really, our only hope is to be sheep of his flock, to be following the good shepherd. That's how that passage begins, by the way. Let's go back to the beginning. Jesus was looking at the crowds that were gathering to him, and it says he felt deep compassion. The reason that he felt compassion was that the crowds were harassed and helpless. The Greek words there, mean things like they were distressed, they were put upon, they were dejected. And he says they were like sheep with no shepherd. One of the saddest images I've ever seen was a video that circulated a few years back in news reports. This video showed this young girl, maybe three or four years old, and she's tugging at her mother who's passed out unconscious in the aisle of Walmart. Her mother was experiencing a drug overdose. She was high on meth or fentanyl or some other opioid. The bond between mother and child is, is precious and it's sacred. So without her mother, this girl is like a little lamb with no shepherd. What a sad and terrifying thing for a little child to go through. That's what Jesus saw when he looked at the crowds. There were people gathering to him. They were like lost children. There were people who were supposed to be guiding them, supposed to be protecting them, but those spiritual leaders were themselves lost. 
Now, in that particular case that I mentioned, the mother survived that overdose. The child, of course, was taken into protective custody, which is not a happy ending. We can only hope and pray that the mother got the treatment that she needed, that she overcame her addiction and was able to be a mother to her daughter once again. Innocent, but not naive putting the best construction on everything, but also interpreting the times and the seasons accurately. There's this balance. And I think it's a balance that only the Holy Spirit can help us with. Today's gospel lesson at its core is a sending text. Apostle means sent one. And in our text today, Jesus is sending the 12 apostles very specifically to the towns of Israel, harvesters being sent out into the harvest field. And we know from a week or two ago, we read the Great Commission where the church as a whole is being commissioned to send, be sent out into the whole world to make disciples of all nations. But before any of that sending happened, before we were sent out as sheep among wolves, Jesus was sent here as the Lamb of God to the midst of the wolf pack known as humanity. And we did to him what wolves do to a sheep. He was innocent and yet wise at the same time for you. He was silent for you and he shed his blood for you. Because he knew that you were distressed, that you were harassed, that you were dejected by the sin that still clings in your life. So Jesus says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, but it's something that he did already for you. It's not something that he's asking that he didn't already do himself. As persecution ebbs and flows in the church, as perhaps government becomes less tolerant of our beliefs in the future, we will need to be as wise as serpents and still as innocent as doves. We don't need to be anxious, though, or constantly worried about what we would do in this situation or that situation because Christ has promised that the Holy Spirit will speak on our behalf, will be there with us in that moment. Until then, however, we remain alert we are thankful that Jesus looks at us and wants to help like a mother wants to help a child, wants to help us navigate this sin-filled world because he is our good shepherd. That's what he has promised to be. We are sheep without a shepherd no longer. We have one. We are a hapless crowd no longer because we have him. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.